Well, yes and no. I think it's a uh, the, the games. I, I, if I was watching as a neutral, I'd be very, very entertained by these games because they're like back and forth. The particularly the first half on Saturday was great. It was you attack, we attack, you attack, we attack, and it was it was like a back and forth like that. Um, but I haven't really enjoyed. Um, I haven't enjoyed. I haven't enjoyed watching us play that that way particularly much because. I just know it just feels like we're we're putting we're continuously putting ourselves in these precarious positions, and so even when you know we we went ahead on Saturday, it might be because I'm conditioned to sort of the, the you know many years of the of the of uh, of melon ball, but there was no part of me that thought like oh yeah that's game over like we'll um, we'll either like we'll get two or three now and we'll be comfortable or we'll see how one nil win. We're just like they're gonna score at some point and then have we got it in it to, to, to go again, which we did immediately, which was great. But then the second half, and I, I do completely agree with what um the two of you said at the weekend and um when you you know that I think the the enforced halftime changes were really unfortunate and they changed a lot. Um I think that they they impacted the game a lot. But um but no, that, that the second half in particular, like it felt, I felt it felt to me like the game has had gone. And I think even if we'd got it back to three, 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 when that was possibility, there there was still more game. There were still more goals in it, and I didn't. I, I just I don't feel any sort of level of security in in, in watching us at the moment. Um, you know, and I mentioned the, the 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 John King teams earlier, and even you know you think back to like a. A Neil McNabb or a Mark Proctor or you know someone like that. There, there was always someone that would provide some degree of um, protection. There'd be a barrier between in front of, in front of the defence. I think of the moments sort of the most. You know, Hendry is perhaps our most deep lying player, but he's among the first to 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 sort to, to go forward. And to to his credit, is I think is a lovely player and and has has played well so far. But I do, I do think we need a little bit of protection in there so something to someone to to to, to not leave the, the center back so exposed in the way in the way that they have been um and you know you've talked about this a couple of times on on the podcast recently it's not like we're short at midfielders but when you break it down i'm i'm not sure we've got many of those types of midfielders to sort of come into that position because we've got you know, Walker, I think, is possibly that type of player to some extent, although I think he's a bit more box-to-box, -box, but he's, you know, was clearly um, not a match fit and got hold of after 45 minutes in the first game, and I don't think has been seen since. Merry could do that job. You know, Merry blows hot and cold, but uh, he, he certainly can do that job, and I think he's better at that job than, than he's been, when he's being asked to do more creative stuff. Um O'Connor is someone who has done that job, but is now A, playing it right back, and B, has potentially picked up a nasty injury. Um, and then you sort of look around and, you know, McAleer doesn't like the, the, the deep-lying role, and I don't think it's sort of that has sort of like that, that de defensive um, size of his game necessarily. And so, you know, you know, we talked, we talked about it, it'd be nice to get a fullback. I wouldn't be that... I know that sounds sort of horribly conservative saying it, but I wouldn't be... If a really good defensive midfielder was to come in, I would at least be reassured that they'd recognise that maybe um, we need to we need to be a little bit more secure at the back. It is odd, given what Tramit probably got about seven or eight centre midfielders on their books at the moment, yeah. that none of them kind of fit into that Jay Spearing, Jay Harris right, yeah. uh, kind of role, um, who is just going to break up play. They're going to be dogged. They're going to put in all the tackles that you want. A Mark Rankin. Terrier in the mm, middle, yeah. but uh, but not uh, not necessarily a forward thinking player. Um, almost a Mickey Mellon kind of player to a degree as well. Yeah. But that 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 is you're, you're absolutely right. And and I, I've said on this before that, that the problem last year was the midfield as much as it was the strike force because the midfield wasn't offering anything going forward. But that midfield had um, Merry and O'Connor playing in it. I, I don't think that they both work together when they played as a two individually. I think no. they're fine. But when you play them together, it just gets a little bit too defensive. And that's why there was no thrust coming through that midfield at times last season. This year, it's gone the other way, hasn't it? It's it's trying to be a very aggressive and ultra aggressive side with maybe Jennings playing in midfield, Kieran Morris, Josh yeah. Hawks. I know he's been out of the side a little bit of late, but there's so many attacking midfielders 
uh, within that side that you're right, it, it is going to fail to protect the uh, the defence. And maybe that's the, the biggest single issue here. Maybe it is that midfielder who can get across from wing to wing and suddenly find themselves making a tackle on the left, protecting the right back, uh, left back, and then do the same on the other side, protecting the right back. Maybe that's the, the issue here. 